So I have this little file, word file, that I've just made up based on the material that Kate posted into prose. I can just get that word document to start up. There we go. So I made this up. So this is the problem that she's trying to translate these and the numbers keep being localized into something that she doesn't want. <clears throat> so I thought I'd take a quick look at those. So I've taken this simple text. It is four different sets of numbers here, but I have made them up. And then I've repeated the file nine times, just so I have um, a bit of a bigger example to show you. So let's create a project for this. We'll just use the default project. Wherever my default's gone. There it is up there. My default. So we'll call this the but let's give it a date. So 15th, 15th year, fourth month, 29th, and it's the first proper project I created today. And this is going to be STL the toolkit and numbers. So I'm oh, I don't want all of those. So I'm going to go English GB to Italian. Don't know why I'm doing Italian, but that's what the language pair I'm going to use. I'll add some files. So I'm just going to add all of those files. I'm not going to add a TM at this point because I don't want it to pre-translate anything. So I'm just going to click finish there. So I'll get a little warning at the end here. The warning is, is not a problem. If I look at the results, just so you can see, it's just telling me that it couldn't find a translation memory. And that's because I didn't add one to the project. <coughs> so it's just information really. So if I close that and I open my project, now I'm going to add the translation memory. So I'll come in here. The only reason I, well, the only reason I didn't um, add it to begin with is purely because I didn't want it to um, to pre-translate the files. So if I open the, let's just open them all up in one go. So you can see I've got all the files here. They're all exactly the same. So I've cheated a bit. But I don't have a better example for this. If I click on here, so you can see I'm getting a result because I have done this before, this particular one. And it's, it's let's just make sure. So I'm going to I'm going to delete remove that translation unit. So I've got no match in there at all. I'm going to copy that one through and change this word. Google tells me that that's durata, duration to, um, from English to Italian. I don't know, but hopefully it is. And if I just confirm that segment, you can see what happens. So for me, with the settings that I have, it correctly does this because it's taken every single one and auto-propagated it all correctly. So it looks like there's no mistakes there. And it's done that throughout the file. So if you're lucky and your settings are working like mine are, it's pretty straightforward to do. But we're going to pretend that this is not the case. Can I undo that? Oh yes, I can un just undo everything. Okay, so and I'll just save that to make sure nothing's there. So there's nothing in the file whatsoever. Now before I go in and show you how to use the STLX Lift Toolkit, perhaps I should just very quickly go to my project settings and show you where the settings are. Um, for the localization. So it's on the specific language pair under auto substitution and dates and times. And in here, you can change the times. So it may be that with the language direction you've got, if you're getting a funny result, it could be the result of something here that is causing something different to happen. Um, I'm going to reset this to defaults. Something different to happen. So you can try changing that here, and that might help. But sometimes if the file is very big, even if you do work like that, the auto-propagation settings can make it quite a big job. So what I'm going to do instead, now that I've got my, my project here, and I'll just open it again quickly. So I've opened all the files, nothing is translated whatsoever. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the STLX Live Toolkit. So I have over here in my welcome view the STLX Live Toolkit. It opens up like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for those segments in here using a regular expression and copy them to target. Then I'm going to replace the target and then lock them, I'm going to confirm them and lock them. And all that's going to take just a few, just, just a couple of operations to do the entire file and it will be correctly done and without any issues. But in order to do that, what I want to do is show you how you create the regular expression. So this is a bit of a training exercise on the toolkit and on regular expressions. So let's just copy that text there. The reason I've done that is because I'm going to start up a little program called Regex Buddy. So if you're at all interested in regular expressions, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend this tool. It's not made by SDL or anything like that. It's a third party tool, but, but I find this the most useful tool of all. So what I've done is I've just pasted the text that I want to look for in here. I've got the test button checked. I've got .NET as my regex flavor. This is important because this is the flavor that Studio uses. Um, and now I'm just going to search for this text. Now the way I'm going to do it is I want to find all of these numbers and although they're all different I'm going to find them using the expression. So first of all to find a number, a number, the shorthand for a number in regular, as a regular expression is backslash D and you can see what happens as I do that it's highlighted um, yellow blue, yellow blue, yellow blue everywhere, it found, everywhere where it found the number. And I want to find it to find more than one number at a time so I'm going to add a plus there and the plus basically just means find um, at least one number and then keep finding them until you don't find any more. So it's found two, then it found a colon so it didn't find anything and it started looking again. And it's found two more and then two more and two more. So you can see they're in groups. If you click on create by the way, this is one thing that's very cool about Regex Buddy is you see it's explaining what they are. So match a single character that is a digit. This would be the, um, the slash D and between one and unlimited time. So you can see what happens if I take that off you can see that's telling me match a single character that is a digit. As soon as I put the plus there, that means between one and unlimited times. Sometimes you see people using a star, and that just means between zero. But I'm going to use the plus because I want it to be at least one number. So the next thing I wanted to find is a colon. So I'm just going to type the colon. So now we have the colon. Now I'm just going to copy that bit to my clipboard because I'm going to use that a few times. So I want to group all of those together. So I paste the next slash D. So you can see I'm finding a bit more and I put a colon and then I'll paste it again and find a bit more. Now to find the dot, if I just put a dot there, you see what happens? It's found the dot but actually it hasn't really found the dot. It's found any character. So for example if I put another dot there it'll find the zero. Every time I put a dot it's going to find something because the dot has a special meaning and it just means find anything. So to specifically find just the the actual dot, I have to, to escape it. And to do that, I put a backslash in front of it. So I put a backslash dot, and that means find a dot. Not find any character, find the dot. And I do my control V to put the numbers back in again. Then I want to find a space. Space, I could just put the space like that with a space, but I'm going to use the slash S, which means a white space, because then there's no gaps in my expression and it's clear what I've found. So you can see it's finding the groups quite nicely here now, but I want to go further, so I do a control V again, and a colon, a control V, and a colon, and a control V, a backslash dot, control V to bring my numbers back in again, backslash S. Okay, now I want to find duration. Duration, backslash S. I'll show you why I'm doing it like this in a minute. Control V, colon, control V, colon, control V backslash dot, control V, backslash S, control V. So there's that, so that's found only the complete expression, which is what I want. Now, the important thing for me is that what I actually want to do, because I'm going to replace things, I want to replace the word duration with the translation for duration, but I don't want to replace the numbers. So I need to remember what those numbers are, and that's called a creating a back reference. And to do that you just put brackets around the bit of the expression that you want to remember. Round brackets. So I'll put a closing bracket around there. 
You see, Regix Buddy is even telling me that I'm missing something because I haven't put the opening the opening parenthesis yet or opening bracket. If I do that, everything works again. So it's still finding it, but it's actually remembering that as a back reference. So I've created two back references there. Now the reason I've done that is because if I was to click on re at the moment I'm in match mode here, but if I go to replace, it gives me an opportunity just to test how this would work. So to remember that first back reference, I would do a dollar one. A dollar one means find whatever I just well, whatever I just put inside those brackets. Then I want it to replace it with durata, so the Italian for duration, and then dollar two. And if I click on replace down here, a list of replacements, you can see it's showing me down the bottom here what will happen if I if I do if I do this. So I search for that and I replace with that. So you can see that it searched for each of those individual um, individual matches is found just with this one expression and replace them all correctly. So these are the expressions that I want to use inside the toolkit. So first of all, I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to come over to my toolkit. Now the first thing I want to do is copy the source to target for the entire project. So if I come back to Studio a second, if I didn't know where that project was, I can click on Open Project Folder. I'm doing this this fairly slowly. When you've done this a few times, it just it doesn't take very long because you won't have to think about it and talk about it the way I am at the moment. So I'm going to pick up the SDL Proj file, and I'm going to drop that into there. And then that has picked up every XDLX lift file, so all nine files that were in my project. So I select all of those. To do that I just clicked on, I'll do it again, to do that I just clicked on the first one in that column there. Scroll down to the bottom, in fact I could have just gone Control A. There we go, Control A. Clicked one of them and Control A and that selected them all. What I'm going to do now is come back to my regex buddy copy that expression, come down to here, and in the source search, I'm in the search tab, I paste that in. Now if I do a, check the regular expressions, and if I do a find all, this will just put them all into here so that I've got a chance to check and make sure I've found the right things. And you can see if I open this up now, it's gone through and it's found in those files. It should have been three instances, of, or four instances of each one, because there's four different um, times that I've got in those files, but it's found them all across all nine files. And that's all it's found, just those matches, because that's what I was looking for. So, when well, I'm happy I've got those, I've found them. What I'm going to do then is copy the source to target. So I click on copy source to target and I say change it. Now what that is, that is actually copied the source to target across the whole file. You can't see it, it's happened in the background, but it has done it. So what I do next is I go to replace, and this time I'm going to go into the target and I'm going to search for the same thing. So this is, it should, oh yeah, there we go, so it's all there, so that's the full expression. So it's pasted in, exactly the same expression, so I found the whole thing. And this time I'm going to replace the target with that, because this is my replace pattern. So $1 is the first part of it, Durata to replace duration, and then $2 to remember the second part of it. Make sure I check use regular expressions. Um, you can preview it if you like. If you preview it, this will just make sure that you can see you've done it correctly. So you can see now this is my sourcer here. This is my target on the right. In fact, if I do this now, you can see what's happened. So it's replaced all of the copied source to target with the Gerata, which is the correct translation. So I've now translated every single one, or I will do when I apply it. So all I'm going to do is click on Replace All. So that's now replaced them all. So actually, this so far is pretty good. I've now copied source to target. I've done all the translations just for those segments automatically across the entire project. I come back to the search. You don't have to do this bit, but I'm going to do it. And on the search side, I'll just click on find all again just to make sure. So I can leave the same thing in there because it's, it is correct. And you can see this time it's shown me the source and the, on the left and the target on the right. So the target is now durata instead of duration because I've corrected it all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say mark them all as translated and lock them. So I don't have to bother with them at all, and I click on change it. Okay, I can close that now, and now if I come back to Studio, and I double click there, and if I just open all of these files up, so I've just selected them all, 
and I open for translation. And when I do it, every single one of those is correctly translated, locked and confirmed <laughs> across the entire project. Now, if, this is easy because it was only nine files. But if this was a, a file with thousands of segments in there and hundreds and hundreds of these things, um, and even across lots of files, you can start to see the advantage that working like this can give you when you have a lot of repetitive text because you deal with it all before you start and now you just haven't got to worry about it. Nothing is going to change, nothing is going to bother you because as you're working you're going to skip right over the text. And that's how I would do it um, if I had to handle a file like this myself. So I hope that was useful anyway and reasonably clear and understandable.